Ooh. Oh, what's up, man? Hey, bud. You're not looking too good, yeah. bro. Yeah. What's wrong? Yeah, for sure. Ooh. Well, I got some stuff in the my house. Yeah, that sounds good. That Maybe sounds we can good. check that out. I've been learning about nutrition. Maybe I can help you. We'll check yeah, out a few sick. vitamins. Yeah, How about that? I'll head over there now. Cool. So yeah, bro, I got two different uh, vitamins. I got the essential and non-essential. Do you know the difference? No, no, I don't really know the difference, actually. Do you think these are made? Do you think they know? Yeah, that's a good question. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase two. Telephase and cytokinesis is how we do. Step one, we chill out out here in prophase. This step is really simple, yeah, it ain't no maze. The nuclear envelope begins to break down. Then the chromatid turn chromatid, it's true to be sound. And they're laying now, time to move on, yeah, metaphase. Stay with me and don't look lost in all days. Homologous pairs go out. That's it! I know a place where I can learn more about this. Wait, hold on, bro! Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. The map. Bro. Bro, you don't understand. The time is now for me to start feeling better. Bro, we need to go now. Wait, I need this. I need to go now. Bro, be careful. If you keep running like that, you're going to burn all your lipids. And that can mess up your hormones. Or can it? Reproduction. Meiosis provides genetic variation. Every part of you comes from one cell. Okay, according to the map, the secret to my health is three destinations. I have to go to the Great Sandbox first, Peptide Park, and the Vitamin Fountain. There's no mark for the Vitamin Fountain. Come on everybody, grab your bags, let's go Hunting for that nutrients, that's the goal We're on a quest for the best, no breath Gotta get my boy healthy without no rest Water fountains up first, then the box After that, I heard the gym rocks Minerals, vitamins Don't forget about the amino acids Let's go, hunting for that nutrients, that's the goal We're on a quest for the best, no breath Gotta get my boy healthy without no rest Water fountains up first, then the box After that, I heard the gym rocks Minerals, vitamins Don't forget about the amino acids What's that thing over there? Oh, that dude over there? That's just Swiper. You just gotta tell him to stop. Swiper, stop being such a. Stop trying to do this, my thing. No Swiper, no. No Swiper, no. No Swiper, no. No Alright, no Swiper, no. Bye.
The dude was a complete weirdo, huh? Come on, what are you doing? We gotta get to the peptide park now. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. This does not look like a park at all. Yeah, man. So the first question is that since there's water here, yeah, tell me, sure, bro. tell me, uh -huh. please. Yeah. Are vitamins soluble? I don't know. It all starts with interphase, replicating DNA in organelles like centrosomes. Those centrosomes go to the corners of the cell and create microtubules on the way. DNA then crumbles up into chromosomes and lines them up with their homologous pairs. Crossover and the trading of genes. Bro, shh. The map's telling me something. Bro, are you being for real? The question is. What's the question? For Peptide Park. The map, I don't know, the map just started glowing. You can't answer this because I, I have no clue what it is. There's essential and non essential amino acids. What's the third category? Oh man. Take your funds and then she de stressed with the blunt. She was the one and now I'm done. I'm sick of this chasing. Got my heart racing. What am I saying? I know she was playing. Kicking my heart to the curb. These are the things I've observed. You know I had to hit them all with the swerve. They're running the back and I had to attack the beat. You are a masterpiece. The world want to take your soul and every part of me. This is a robbery. Don't ever. I want to be just like a fish, feel the ammonia exit I want to be just like a bird. Hello everyone, Wayden White here, internet's busiest bio teacher back again, going through these daily science questions. I hope you liked the video, I hope you enjoyed it. So, first question, correct? What is an essential nutrient? Pretty much, an essential nutrient is anything that your body cannot produce on its own. An example would be omega-3 or omega-6. Your body cannot produce these on its own and it must be ingested. That's the difference between an essential nutrient and just a normal nutrient. So the short answer is piano. All right, question number two. Do fatty acids affect hormones? The answer is yes, they do. Without fatty acids, no, most of your hormones cannot synthesize, and this can mess with testosterone and estrogen. So, so short answer, yes, fatty acids do affect hormones. Question number three, are minerals organic? The short answer is a big no. Minerals don't, don't contain the element carbon in them, I mean, I mean most of them don't, making them inorganic. However, they do appear organically, so a lot of people can get that mixed up, but they are not organic. Elements are not, I mean minerals are not organic. Question number four. Are vitamins soluble? For the most part, yes, most vitamins are soluble. And the final question. What is the third category? The answer is... Hold up. <laughs> The answer is conditionally non-essential. This includes all the amino acids that only infants need and receive from the breast milk and maybe some supplements that need to be carried on later in life. So those are the daily science questions. I hope you enjoyed. We'll get back to the lesson now. So, a disorder you should all know about is 
phenylketonuria. Or PKU for sure. I'm going to be referring it to like that. Because uh, that's, a, that's a lot of syllables that uh, I'm not willing to say over and over. It is a genetic disease that is recessive. So two parents have to at least be carriers for it to show up. Uh, surprisingly, it's actually common at, at European ancestry. So a lot of the time, people need to will look out for that. But uh, they don't discriminate by that. All infants, before they before the first time they breastfeed, are tested for this, along with a series of other uh, things that come with the blood. They you know they just hit the heel, a little blood, a little blood sample, and they actually test for this. The reason for that is because this uh, disease actually prevents the person uh, with it from being able to break down this amino acid. They lack the hen their uh, body doesn't produce the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase and that prevents them from uh, producing the enzyme phenylalanine which then prevents them from being able to break down phenylketonuria. I'm sorry, PKU. I said I wasn't going to keep saying that. But that's the process. Boom, boom, boom. Now, and then it all downhill, it's all downhill from there. What this can cause is a series of disabilities, including mental retardation, uh, seizures, and worst case scenarios, death. This is because with the buildup of uh, this protein, phenylalanine, got that down yet? Good. Uh, the buildup of this in your blood, it just kind of goes everywhere, and what's a big part of your body that has a lot of blood? Not down there. Up here, this head, your brain has a lot of blood, and uh, this protein can start to build up and ruin all that circulation. The reason for uh, these disabilities. <clears throat> Going back to the breastfeeding thing, the reason why they test before that is because breast uh, milk contains a lot of proteins, which, woo, surprisingly has a lot of amino acids, and guess what? That's one of them. So they, uh, before the first breastfeeding, they make sure nothing happens like that because there's no cure, but there is a way to prevent it, and that is to limit the amount of proteins that are in a person's diet. So a person with this disease would probably shy away from fish, chicken, eggs, even diet soda because it does contain this amino acid and go for a low protein, high, uh, I don't want to say high carb, but like a lot of vegetables uh, type of diet. They usually have to take supplements for the other amino acids also. It is what it is, isn't it? Welcome back class. <sighs> so. What can go wrong with all this eating stuff? Surprisingly, a decent amount of things can. Which I guess is just life. You can walk outside and literally a tuba falls on you or something. Uh, all their hunger stems from the hypothalamus. Wow, who would have thought? Going back to our whole... Never mind, I'm not going to talk about that right now. But, yes, the hypothalamus can pretty much controls our eating, along with a few feedback loops which are also used. And uh, what sends that signal to the hypothalamus is the vagus nerves within your stomach. You see, when you eat a bunch of food, your stomach swells, and then these uh, vagus nerves start to send signals to your brain, letting it like, hey, bro, we kind of good, we're full, we don't need to keep eating anymore. Along with uh, these vagus nerves helping control your diet to make sure you don't like overeat, uh, we also have leptin. And leptin is actually produced by fat tissue. So you would think that like uh, the more fat tissue you have, the more leptin that is produced and the less you'll eat. It's kind of a really cool uh, feedback loop that your body does with the hypothalamus, vagus nerves, and leptin. Uh, however, all these things can be overrid overridden. Do you think like, okay, how come uh, obesity is such a problem? It's because these can be overrid overridden by yourself. Like an uh, example would be stress eating. Or a better example would be uh, advertisements that really try to incentivize you to go buy that new McFlurry or whatever you're trying to eat. Uh, <clears throat> these, those uh, subliminal signals can really mess that up and cause you to continue to eat even though you're not necessarily in the mood to and your body is telling you not to. Uh, going into body image now, 
it's a very sensitive topic, but uh, what IB wants you to know is that everything is pretty much based off the BMI or body mass index. This takes into account height and weight, and if you have a body mass index of anything over 25, you're considered in risk for uh, these two little things down here, plus a little more, but we'll get we'll touch on those a little bit later. Uh, so where was that? Hypertension. This is just a fancy way. Oh, I don't need this. It's just a fancy way of saying high blood pressure. So basically, when your BMI goes up, your body mass index, your mass goes up, and when you have more cells. You need more blood, and when you have more blood and more cells that need the blood, your heart needs to start pumping more and getting it further. If you think about it like this, if you have a hose with low pressure, you can squeeze the hose smaller so that air goes through it faster, I mean water goes through it faster, and the same thing with your blood. Uh, the pressure goes up within your blood vessels to deliver the to, uh, deliver the blood to further cells that are in your body because your body's bigger now. Diabetes two, however, so with type two diabetes or how IB put it in the book, adult onset diabetes, but they said that is an old-fashioned term. Uh, basically, the insulin in your body, which allows cells to absorb glucose within the blood, because remember when you eat something, uh, it may, it's broken down into glucose, and glucose flows within your bloodstream. Glycogen is the one that's in your uh, liver. Uh, diet, type 2 diabetes, patients with type 2 diabetes have something called insulin resistance. There we go. Haha, <laughs> I had to think about that. Instant insulin resistance. And what instant insulin resistance does is with glucose in the bloodstream the insulin uh, just ain't working right it's uh, not allowing for the glucose to be absorbed into the cells which the cells would then use for energy and there is a, a correlation between BMI and type 2 diabetes and you can we can assume that the reason for this is due to uh, if you do have a higher BMI you are probably ex consuming more sugar or glucose which could in turn cause the resistance to insulin. Also, uh, a higher BMI is correlated to lack of exercise, and with exercise you'd be able to burn that glucose within your bloodstream, and it wouldn't just be all over yourself giving you type 2 diabetes. Diabetes! <laughs> Alright. Okay, class. Nutrition disorders. Danielle, I hope you don't have a ton of questions that you're trying to ask me right now because I can't hear them. But nutrition, nutrition disorders. We're going to start with deficiencies. So, it's basically what it sounds like. A deficiency is when you're either lacking in a caloric intake, and that can go back to our uh, saccharides and sugars that we haven't necessarily talked about. It's due to be it's due to the fact that those are all caloric intakes and not nutritional values. But you can have a deficiency with uh, caloric intake. And that's just basically just uh, losing more calories than you're actually consuming. Or it can be talking about uh, an essential nutrient. Where not, again, your body cannot produce an, an essential nutrient. I can't stress that enough. So you have to be able to intake it. And when you don't have that, uh, that can cause a deficiency. An example of a deficiency would be, duh, starvation. And during a time like that, your body will first go to its glycogen storage, and if there's nothing there, it then goes to body fat. And that's when you're like hitting the gym, you're trying to burn that body fat. But if that's not there, you're in risk of actually beginning to break down your skeletal muscles. And that's when we start to see the real signs of starvation with very thin uh, extremities and very thin ligaments. Not ligaments, I'm sorry. I don't know, arms. Very thin arms. <laughs> uh, and that's where the term comes from, like, oh, that person just looks like skins and, skin and bones, because at that point they might be, due to the fact that they burned a lot of their skeletal muscle off.
All right, so the next one, imbalance. For the most part, this is usually caused to uh, a culture having a staple crop such as corn for, I don't know, like the Mayans or something, and then rice for uh, countries in Asia, and the staple crop not having a complete source of uh, amino acids, essential amino acids. And this could lead to very, very severe can lead to a very, very severe lack of nutrients and deficiencies or uh, weight gain. This still happens today within a first world country, surprisingly. Fast food can be considered a stable crop because if you consistently eat it for every single meal of the day, it's actually not providing every single essential nutrient you may need to survive, causing a deficiency. I'm sorry, not a deficiency. Deficiency with uh, essential nutrients, of course, but we're more focusing on the fact that you are eating an imbalanced diet, which then leads to the deficiencies. Finally, we have excess. And I kid you not, when reading and studying this unit, the IBHL handbook literally said, like, excess you're overweight. Like that was practically the only thing. And honestly, an excess amount of nutrients is when you begin to uh, consume more calories than you need and therefore pitting on more fat and increasing your BMI and the risks for what we talked about before, hypertension and type 2 diabetes. Uh, for the most part, that's the only thing when it comes to excess. So deficiencies, lacking caloric or uh, essential nutrients. And balance, lacking essential, only a specific couple uh, essential nutrients due to a staple crop or fast food, an excess, just an overabundance of uh, caloric or nutrient uh, intake leading to a risk for BMI, uh, higher BMI, and hypertension, type 2 diabetes. Thank you. Yes, you. You, 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 you. Uh, Sean... Kermia, Micah, Jasleen, Danielle, Mojave, Evelyn, Jasmine, Sophie, I'm not there. Thank you, Janelle, for setting this all up. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there. But tomorrow we're probably going to do something really fun. I hope it's fun. If it works out in my head well, it should be a really good review activity. And on Thursday, you guys are going to start your unit with uh, Jasleen and Danielle talking about the digestive system. I hope you enjoyed our little lecture series, and I really hope you enjoy the review session lesson things, activities that I have planned for tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be there. I'm not too sure yet.